Another day of Republican Bob Corker showing he is mad as hell at his own party. Today he took on Republican leadership, claiming the GOP is becoming like a cult under President Trump. We're in a strange place. I mean, it's almost, uh, uh, you know, been a, it's becoming a cultish thing, isn't it? Um, and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's not a good place for any party to, to end up with a cult-like situation as it relates to, uh, to, to a president that uh, happens to be of purportedly of the, of the same party. Now, let me remind everyone that Bob Corker is not running for re-election, but other Republicans who are may have received a strong message from last night's primaries. President Trump today is claiming victory via Twitter for sinking the re-election bid of South Carolina Congressman Mark Sanford. Trump endorsed newcomer Katie Arrington just hours before those polls closed. Uh, in Virginia, Republican voters chose a pro-Trump candidate, Corey Stewart, defended Civil War memorials and tweeted essentially that Moving Confederate statues was as bad as the actions of ISIS. And in Nevada, a pro-Trump brothel owner who wrote the book, The Art of the Pimp, won the GOP primary for the state legislature, ousting a three-term Republican. So let's discuss with two conservatives who have very different views, Republican strategist Rick Wilson and CNN political commentator Ben Ferguson. Fellas, good to have you both back on. Rick, Thanks, let me start Brooke. with let me start with you just on this word cult, you know, as in the Republican Party has become almost cult like in its support of Trump. We, we have now seen the word cult used three times in the past two, two uh, days. Corker twice, Eric Erickson once. Is that the word you would use? I, I think I think cult may not even be strong enough as a phrase, Brooke. I what think we are use? right now entering a point where where these folks have almost adopted Trumpism as a religion. They've religion. almost adopted Trumpism as something that is so overwhelming all of their other judgments about everything around them that, that you know, any word against him is, a, is, is religious level blasphemy. Any critique of Trump must immediately be, you know, be declared as apostasy and they, those people have to be stoned and shunned and whatnot. I don't think there's stoned? any give anymore inside, wow. inside the traditional Republican Party where, where you can critique the president in any way without risking both his cult-like uh, acolytes and votaries, um, you know, going absolutely crazy on you, and the president himself tweeting uh, and de deploying his 50 million social media followers. So, yeah, these guys have fallen into line in, in large measure out of fear. Um, but, you know, cults and, and, and edge case religions operate on fear and intimidation very frequently, not just on sort of enlightenment and love. So I think, it, I think cult is a very strong but a very good word in this case. Ben, what say you? Yeah. Uh, I, I'm just going to enjoy this moment for just a second because this is exactly what draining the swamp was supposed to be about. You got a bunch of great haired old guys that had their cult that controlled Washington for decades. Bob Corker was one of those. And people started realizing that Bob Corker was a fraud. He wasn't a real conservative. He wasn't doing what he promised he was going to do when he went to Washington. And, and look, I support him when he ran for the Senate the very first time in my home state of Tennessee. He's gone now. He wouldn't have been able to win re-election. And so now he acts like he's going to be all big and bad and, and call out people when, let's be clear, he's never called out any Republican the entire time he's been in Washington because he was too afraid of losing his own seat by saying these types of things. So only after he, he'd already lost. He's he obviously, then decides, he, oh, I'm going to be a truth teller. I'm going to say it like <laughs> it is. Well, if you would have done that when you were actually elected, you might actually have gotten reelected this time, but you were a fraud. So I, I think this just shows exactly what the president said at the beginning. And this isn't about his 50, 50 million followers. This is about people like Bob Corker, who cared more about being important and more about being famous in Washington than they did about doing now, what they on. said they were going to do. Hang on, because well, <laughs> you know, hang on, hang on, because you say truth teller, and, and Rick, I want you to jump in. But you know, beyond the, it's the cult line that's getting the headlines. But when you read deeper, you know, part of Corker's whole argument is that it's the president who struggles with the ch truth, right? Makes these ad hoc comments, has to walk them back, or just totally change them. I mean, for, forget the party for a second. Does, would you would you at least say that Corker has a point that struggling with the truth is a big issue when you represent 300 million Americans? Ben Ferguson. 
Oh, I, yeah. Look, I, I think that's a valid point that you can make. We should always want politicians to tell the truth. But like let's the also president be clear of the United about, States. about right, of, of course. And when the president said something that's not true, and you know me, I've been on the show and said that what yeah. he said was not accurate, not true. And that, that's, that's the part that, that I think is important here. But Bob Corker, th this grandstanding, when he's a guy that lied to his own constituents about lowering taxes and being a fiscal conservative, he lied to his own constituents about really pushing hard to repeal and replace Obamacare. He lied to his constituents about the Iran nuclear deal, which is why he is not running for re-election. So a guy coming out and using the word cult like Bob Corker, my advice to, to Senator Corker is do yourself a favor. Go retire in the mountains of Tennessee. Call your ex-important friends in Washington that have not been reelected. And you guys sit around talking about how you should have done what your job was when you were actually there. And leave us alone while we're actually trying to get something done that you never accomplished. <laughs> okay, so, so Ben says this is what this is draining the swamp looks like. Um, and enjoy the, the beautiful, you know, Smoky Mountains of Tennessee. Rick, um, you know, you say that, that cult, yes, it's a cult. Maybe that's a strong enough and it should be a religion. Who do you think is, who's to blame for that? Is it Paul Ryan? Is it Mitch McConnell? Put a name on it for me. Let me, let, Brooke, let me cover a couple of things really quickly. First off, when we get to down to the truth teller point, this is the Baron, Mon, Baron von Munchausen of presidents. Donald Trump is a serial, constant, helpless liar. He is captured by his own sense of fantasy all the time. He makes up things every day. Post-truth America is led by Donald Trump. So the, the, the question of whether when someone becomes a truth teller isn't relevant in this uh, about Bob Corker. It is relevant that Donald no, Trump is a lying you can't liar call who out lies someone constantly. else a liar when you lie to your own constituents. The hell I can't, Ben. The hell I can't. Well, well, Donald that, that's, Trump that's just is not a using serial logic. liar and fabulist. There is nothing this so man Bob can do. Bob Corker to is a truth teller a, to in keep your a story mind. Come on. To keep, there's nothing, Bob, there's nothing that Bob Corker has to do with Donald Trump being a serial liar and fabulous. Bob this is a Corker president is not who going absolutely is distrusted by majority. The, this president is distrusted is by large the majorities of the American people. Ben, you can filibuster later. This president is I'm distrusted by very large facts. majorities of the American people. He's distrusted by very large majorities of the American people because why? He is a constant, inveterate, serial, pathological liar. I'm sorry you can't Brooke. own that, Ben. I'm sorry you can't embrace the fact, uh, the truth Rick, of the Brooke. fact of the matter of Donald Trump. Okay. Rick, but, Rick, but here, Rick got the this. last point. The ben fact Ferguson. that Bob Corker is making a critique, the fact, here, here's ben, the thing. The fact Brooke, that Bob Corker this is, is making this a critique. Is the, this is the demise. Ben, the fact Katie, that Bob Katie, Corker Katie, is making a critique ben, of Donald go. Trump's trustworthiness. Let, let, ben, let the fact that Bob Corker is making a critique of Donald Trump's Ben, I haven't interrupted you, but I'm happy to do so in the future when you're talking, okay? The fact that Bob Corker is making a critique of Donald Trump's the fact Bob that Bob Corker, Corker is making a critique is of Donald Trump's lying of is not happens. irrelevant to this case. It is, in fact, Ben, it is, in fact, an indicator that Donald Trump has, no, has drawn the attention of the vast majority of the American people, I, about 70% of point. the American people, even and Trump supporters, that you guys say he's not honest on. and trustworthy. You, ben, again, fast, I'll, I'll say this. Bob ben, Corker is the ben. poster child of what exactly happens when you go out there and you lie to your constituents and you don't do what you say you're going to do and you are part of the swamp. And Corker is an angry oh, like, man like that lost control and right. lost power. All right, gentlemen, I got, I got you both you like your points. I think everyone watching got both your points. Wall, you and when we're doing this at Thanks, the same bro. time, it's not helping everyone. Ben Ferguson, I got love for you. You come back all the time. I appreciate it. Rick, don't move a muscle because I'm, I'm hanging on to you.